To explain this, I am going to develop 5 scenarios with the help of data science to monitor cash transaction in any financial institution. So if you are a ML safety professional working in banking and financial sector then you will find this video very useful. So I request you to watch this video till the end. Hello, good evening to all of you. In this video we are going to talk about how to improve transaction monitoring system in your organization. This is my assumption only. I believe many financial institutions will be having following kind of transaction monitoring system. First they will have a some kind of AML solution system which have a certain scenarios built in them. This scenario will generate some kind of alerts. These alerts will be reviewed by first level AML analyst which I believe may be a junior level staff. That ML analyst will do either of two tasks. He will perform a certain kind of analysis by collecting uh, document relating to KYC and other relevant documents and if there is any confusion he will send inquiry to concern branch or department or he or she will just identify some transaction as a false positive outright he or she does not need to perform any kind of inquiry he will just ignore that alert that ML analyst will just ignore that alert then that analyst will derive at a conclusion whether to file str or not after that this conclusion will be reviewed by second level analyst which i think might be in a some higher level position now that aml analyst has to perform same task as a aml one analyst to verify whether that conclusion was correct or not for the time being let's take a false positive scenario. In this case, AML analyst uh, has to open system and review the alert. Okay, then in order to close that alert, he will uh, he he needs to write some remarks in the system. Maybe transaction is a false positive or alert is a false positive, and the same has to be reviewed by second level of analyst. This whole process will take at least ten minutes and which is a lot of time let's say for example you have developed five scenarios to monitor cash transaction then reviewing all this scenario will take approximately 50 minutes for this both analyst another problem with this approach is is that you uh, your organization will have assign other scenarios to ML analyst level 1 and the level 2 analyst has to review all the scenarios escalated by all the ML analyst in your organization. There is high chances that your ML analyst will not be able to review all the alerts in a single day. There will be some alerts in a pending status. But as you may know that some scenarios are very sensitive in nature. Let's take the example of scenario to monitor cash transaction below threshold amount. This scenario captures all those cash transactions made by customer to evade threshold amount to prevent their transaction from reporting to regulatory bodies. This is a very sad situation, but you may think that hiring additional staff will solve your issue. But my concern is hiring more staff will not resolve you from this situation. You need to perform some kind of business process re-engineering. By that, you need to improve transition monitoring system and make it efficient and effective. Uh, and data science can help you with that. Next I will show you how you can develop different scenarios 
like to monitor cash transaction below threshold, height cash transaction in any particular account, transaction performed by a single conductor in multiple accounts, identifying hidden beneficial owner, identifying fictitious transaction with the help of data science. With that code you can monitor cash transaction on a daily basis and it will take a much less time, maybe about 5 minutes of your time and it will make your whole cash transaction monitoring process efficient and effective. Let's talk about data. This is actually simulated data meaning it does not represent actual financial transaction. So in this data we have a branch where the account was opened, account name, transaction amount, debit and credit, transaction date. Let's change it so that so that the transaction is of a single day. Then we have a time, conductor details. Conductors are those individuals who bring check or deposit voucher in the counter. Then we have purpose of transaction, risk rating, meaning what is the risk rating of that account. Then transaction branch, meaning the branch where the transaction was conducted in that account. So that is all about the data that we are going to analyze. In this stage, I am going to write code to develop each scenarios to monitor cash transaction with the help of Python and Pandas data frame in Google Colab. It is okay if you don't understand these terms right now. I will be giving the link for the code in the description section of this video. My aim in this course is not to teach you how to code but to help you understand how you can leverage data science to make your transaction monitoring system effective and efficient. You can even ask uh, your one IT team who, ha who may have a developer team within their department structure who can develop more robust system based on this code. So these are the, our excel files that were created using our data science code. Now let's download them and after downloading let's open the original daily transaction detail file also. So our first scenario is cash transaction below threshold. So in the excel sheet we have identified one account doing two cash transaction below threshold. So if we look at the original file that is daily transaction details file we will find that this account has performed two transaction below threshold of 10 lakh. Another scenario was to identify high frequency cash transaction in a, any particular account. So here we can see that Stoman group have performed a high number of cash transaction. So we can see this in a original file. So there, uh, the, all the transaction is, uh, is about 20,000 rupees. So we need to definitely inquire about this transaction uh, this might be suspicious. Another scenario was to identify same conductors doing cash transaction in multiple accounts. So here we have identified Mo uh, Moses Nidman and Samara Larson are performing high number of cash transaction in different account. So in case of Samara Larson, it doesn't look suspicious uh, but uh, as she is performing that transaction in her account but for Moses Needham, Needham he is performing cash transaction in multiple unrelated accounts. So 
it might suggest that Moses Needham is a or maybe a hidden beneficial owner for this account that warrants a detailed investigation. Now this scenario is very interesting. We are going to identify fictitious transaction. For that I have grouped all the transaction into 5 minutes time interval. So my assumption is that in order to perform any kind of uh, cash transaction whether it is cash deposit or cash withdrawal a tailor in any counter would take at least 2 minutes. For example, in case of cash deposit, he or she has to count that cash and enter in the system. So if there are let's say 5 transactions done within a 5 minutes then that is definitely suspicious. It means that in case of cash deposit there is high chance that branch have not collected any cash from the customer but made fictitious entry in the system and in case of cash deposit there may be five checks presented at the counter but the receiver was only one person or conductor this is also a f example of fictitious transaction in our example we have found that one branch have conducted four transaction within the five minutes from five o'clock so we can safely assume that there might be something fishy going over here now some of you may be thinking that I don't need this fancy data science I can do with uh, good old Excel but please remember this is only example in real life you will be analyzing about 10,000 to 1 million cash transaction depending upon the size of your financial institution. So the pandas data frame is very efficient in analyzing those transactions. With the few line of course it will only take 5 minutes to run and you can analyze this transaction just like that. You can also even create a threshold. Let's say you can say that if the number of cash transaction below threshold is above 5 I will only consider those account for suspicious transaction analysis for the rest I will ignore them and another thing you can do here is that you can beside monitoring this cash transaction on daily basis you can uh, monitor all the cash transaction in every month so the advantage is that if any suspicious account was overlooked during daily task uh, daily cash transaction analysis you can identify during your monthly analysis that is all for this video uh, wait I have forget to mention one thing I have created this uh, group in Facebook community for risk management professional this is group for all uh, risk management professional out there who are working in AML safety area uh, compliance area information security area or in any risk management area my aim for creating this group is to bring our knowledge skills experience I hope you will understand my calling and join forces thank you for giving your valuable time for watching this video and I hope to see you soon in this group before parting if you found this video useful then please do like share this video as much as you can so that other could also get benefit from this video and also do subscribe this channel to help it grow I will be encouraged to put more useful content like this in near future